introduce you to Olivier Huard, CEO of TDF. Connect faster, further, everywhere. That's his motto. He's going to defend it for the next 15 minutes. Mm. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm really glad that the uh, theme of this uh, uh, days uh, is around investing and specifically around infrastructure because it's exactly the same way you are talking about sandwiches, not talking about <laughs> bread, you know, this slice of bread. And, uh, you know, without the slice of bread, you just cannot uh, eat uh, the right types of sandwiches. So no matter uh, discussing about uh, ham, uh, tuna, etc. Uh, you need to, to have this slice of, uh, of bread. So I'm also uh, very thankful to, uh, to eat that for their 40th anniversary. And I'd like maybe to, uh, to come back to uh, the very birth of Idat because four years before uh, Idat was born, someone, uh, Alain Perfit, wrote uh, a letter, uh, uh, a book. It was called Quand la Chine s'éveillera when China wakes up. And um, this, uh, when China wakes up, is uh, a sentence that was uh, inherited from Napoleon Bonaparte. So even Napoleon Bonaparte thought about China. I was two weeks ago in China, spending a full week between Hong Kong, Shenzhen, Shanghai, and Beijing. And I can tell you, it's more like, wow. Alain Perfit, when China wakes up, I can tell you, China has waken up. And the key point is, when Europe, France, Spain, whoever, will wake up in, in, terms, of, in terms of infrastructure. Just a few elements. 80% of the country is fibered. 80% homes fibered in, uh, in, in, in China. FTTH plan launched in 2013, four years ago. 70% coverage in 4G. 5G to be launched in 18 months, to be full speed uh, by 2022. 1.9 million towers spread all over the country, i.e. Uh, 1,350 towers per million inhabitants, to compare with 350 towers in France. Just a ratio of one to four, and basically, I took the train between Shanghai and, and Beijing, four and a half hours, 350 uh, kilometers per hour, a tower every five seconds. A tower every five seconds means a tower every 500 meters. Full coverage 4G, 40, uh, to, uh, 30 to 4G megabits per, per, per second uh, service, uh, full coverage between Shanghai and, uh, and Beijing. It's really Really impressive. First economy in e-commerce in terms of proportion of uh, retail, B2C retail sale. 16% of this country uh, is already uh, in e-commerce. And you have, in front of the GAFA, as it was mentioned uh, this morning, you have Alibaba, Baidu, Tencent, WeChat, Xiaomi, etc. They're really, they're really there at the present moment. So, where is Europe? It was mentioned uh, this morning, we're, uh, we're far away. And uh, as uh, um, Francois, my former boss at BT, is, uh, used to say, it's a wake-up call. It's really a wake-up call. Um, our economy has moved uh, fully to uh, the digital era. It was mentioned uh, uh, already uh, this, uh, this morning, and I'd like to uh, also um, build on, on what um, uh, Jacques Kremer uh, explained this morning because another eminent uh, professor at this university, uh, Jean Tirole, the Economy uh, Nobel Prize, was also building uh, on this. He wrote in his book, L'économie du bien commun, uh, Common Good Economy, la numérisation de la société est au cœur des changements économiques et sociétaux du XXIe siècle. Elle impactera toutes les activités humaines, comme elle a déjà modifié le commerce, les médias, le transport ou l'hôtellerie. Our society moving to digital is at the heart of both economic and society changing in the uh, 21st century. This will impact human activities to the same extent it already impacted retail, media, uh, transport and hotel trade. And why so? Because two main drivers, um, as the economists are, are mentioning, will impact our society. One is 
the gravity law for commerce. What is the gravity law for commerce? The gravity law of commerce is trade level increases when transport costs decrease. Very easy. So no or limited access to digital infrastructure is a substantial limitation factor to the economical development. It is very similar to what uh, shipping uh, has done, has provided to uh, economy in the 19th century, or to what rail has provided uh, to the economy uh, to the uh, 20th century. The second uh, key driver uh, for that is what the economists call the two-phase market platforms, the marché biface, the two-phase market platform, winner-takes-all syndrome. What is it? What, what is it? A two-phase market is a platform uh, allowing seller and buyer to interact uh, very rapidly. In a first step, this creates low barrier to entry in terms of competition. In a second step, it generates recommendation offering. And in a third step, it allows the best reputation player to take everything on the market. That's what they call um, the winner takes soul syndrome. So it means it's a kind of no woman, no cry. No digital infrastructure, no business. As simple as that. If you don't have the bread, you don't have the sandwich. So very important for our economy to uh, wake up uh, now in Europe, everywhere in Europe, uh, to uh, uh, have as much as uh, bread as, as it is possible. So uh, high-speed mobile and fixed infrastructure are no longer a nice to have. They are a desperate must have. And I, I urge everyone to, uh, to, really, uh, consider, uh, uh, to, to really consider this. So part of our strategy at TDF is, of course, to, um, to focus on that. We are 100% uh, focused now on um, uh, digital media and telecoms infrastructure. And we have rolled out uh, activities uh, around the four axes. One is broadcast. The second is masts and towers for mobile coverage. And the last one, and I will uh, develop a little bit, is fiber rollout for FTTH. So France is catching up fast on 4G, but is still lagging behind in FTTH. I'm sure Sebastian, so I know, will develop uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, as well. France is indeed lagging behind in terms of uh, FTTH rollout, and I'm glad to see that Spain is even uh, ahead of France uh, in this. Um, because France is, yes, definitely ranking in the last uh, quartile uh, uh, within, uh, within Europe. But France has now a clear uh, and very ambitious uh, roadmap. The key question is, it's great, we have a plan, but it's a question of speed now. We need to implement it, and it is urgent. So the plan is to have, um, uh, beyond the existing situation, the, the current situation is 50% households are eligible to 30 plus megabits per, 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 per second. Uh, via all means, uh, uh, fiber, uh, cable, satellite, uh, A or V, uh, DSL today, and 30% of households are eligible to uh, FTTH at the present moment. So what, what are uh, uh, the plans? The plan is to move to 100% of households eligible to uh, uh, 8 and plus megabits per second uh, by 2020. To have 100% of households eligible to uh, uh, 30 plus megabits per second by 2022, to have 80% of households eligible to FTTH by 2022, and to have 100% of households eligible to FTTH by 2025. This is the plan France is having, and we should now implement it and not uh, uh, get some, some, some delay in it. To, to achieve those goals, uh, France was split into three areas. This was architectured and, and structured in, two, in 2011, so uh, six years ago. One is the high density area. High density area, it's 20% of the population and it's 5% of territory. 20% population, 5% territory. Competition in both infrastructure and services, full private funding for infrastructure, mostly covered today. Second area is the medium density area. In our French jargon, it's also referred to as the AMI, uh, the AMI zone. Um, not the friend zone, but the uh, appel à manifestation d'intérêt uh, pour investir. 
It's 35% uh, population, 20% uh, of uh, territory. It's full private funding for infrastructure, but uh, the business case flies only for a single infrastructure. So um, uh, only Orange and SFR uh, so far has shown interest in investment, and it's partially uh, covered and rolled out at the present moment. The third and last uh, zone is the low density area. It's also referred to as the RIP uh, zone. RIP, not rest in peace, but Réseau d'Initiative Public, i.e. public initiative networks. 45% of the uh, population, but 75% of the territory. So business flies for a single infrastructure, um, but business flies without any mixed um, business, uh, business case doesn't fly without any mixed um, private and public funding for infrastructure. So it's the only zone where you have a mixed private and public uh, funding. Public service delegation, concession or affirmage from local authorities uh, following uh, tenders. And all tenders will all be awarded by end of 2018, i.e. end of next year. End of next year end of the story, everything be awarded and should now be, 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 be rolled out. So the, the low density area is, is a great paradigm in France in terms of rolling out uh, FTTH because it offers uh, a lot of uh, very good uh, element uh, to the development of economy. One, local authorities are running the process. They are the best position to take into consideration local priorities, local arbitrage, local asperities. Two, the tender criteria uh, to, uh, to be awarded such a concession or an affirmage are, of course, the lowest subsidy, of course, the strongest rollout uh, roadmap with the clearest commitments and penalties, and three, the best local uh, in involvement in terms of um, employment uh, mainly. Three, uh, the competitive and the transparent process um, to choose uh, the best infrastructure. It's very important when you have a single infrastructure uh, to roll out and to choose to ensure that uh, you, you follow a process which is competitive and which is transparent. And last but not least, this single but best infrastructure has to be open and neutral to host all types of ISPs, so it um, commits uh, to uh, full competition, at least on services, even if you have a single uh, infrastructure. So the, the medium density uh, area parading, I think would gain a lot by following the same kinds of principles, especially the competitive and transparent process, clear commitments and penalties, and last but not least, openness and neutrality towards all types of ISPs. So TDF has engaged since uh, now, for, for now two years into these low density tenders and has won uh, two tenders. Uh, TDF can offer best of both world, i.e. on the one hand, a new entrant uh, with no legacy and, and a pure infra uh, player uh, approach, pure wholesale player, huh? uh, fully open, fully neutral. And on the other hand, a very strong uh, financial profile to sustain uh, what we can stamp or labeled as a 1 billion euro per million FTTH plug uh, industry. This is the, the, the kind of element you need to uh, talk. We're talking big money uh, in, this, uh, in this industry as it was recalled by both Craig and, uh, and Carlos uh, previously. So uh, FTTH is now one of our third leg, if it is, is, one of, uh, is one of our legs, the third, the third leg of uh, TDF. TDF would uh, or could be uh, now, I would say, renamed uh, T for telecom, D for uh, uh, diffusion in French or digital TV in English, and F for fiber, uh, to, to better express what it is. <laughs> um, and thanks to its new shareholding structure, uh, TDF can envisage a safe growth profile around the digital media and telecoms infrastructure. So this is what I was referring to, this slice of bread. Very important to uh, ensure that we have a slice of bread everywhere. It can be white bread, brown bread, bagel, whatever, uh, baguette, whoever. You, but you need to have 
this slice of bread, and you have to, uh, to get this slice of bread everywhere uh, in the country and to cover the full, the full density. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Olivier.